What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and today I'm starting a new ongoing series about breaking the mold in common web design patterns. You know exactly what I mean when I say common web design patterns. Big heroes or footers or navigations, contact forms and about me sections, all those things that you see over and over and over in WordPress templates and Squarespace templates, the things that have become standardized and mundane. In this series, we're gonna be taking those standard web design patterns and reimagining them, flipping them on their head, trying to find a new, fun, fresh, and exciting way to execute that same thing. We're not gonna be tackling whole websites or even whole web pages, but one section at a time and seeing how we can breathe a little life into it. I don't know, maybe it's the punk rocker in me. I've just never liked to fit in. Okay, today we're gonna to be tackling the famous header or hero or top section of a homepage of a website. I have some examples on the screen right now of common patterns you might see. It's kind of the same thing over and over. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it the big horizontal banner. And so there's lots of variations of it, but here you see on the screen, I have a big horizontal banner. Maybe there are different slides that come in and out. Maybe it's just text. Maybe sometimes it has a button or call to action, but it's this big horizontal kind of billboard, so to speak. Uh, here's another one, a different implementation of one. Um, we have a background image, a big call to action, and maybe a little bit of subject matter, but still a big horizontal billboard. And then the very last one, you have some sort of slide driven, kind of center focused, you know, just big billboard. It just looks like a big billboard you would drive by on the highway. And that is kind of the standard you see. So we wanna take this and kind of flip this on its head and have a little fun with it. So I'm gonna jump over into Sketch for Mac. That's what I'm gonna be using today. Uh, feel free to use any program you want. Uh, it's gonna be pretty much the same. But if you want this file that I'm using in Sketch for Mac, then the link will be down in the description. Uh, the starting file comes with a color palette, an artboard established, and this model uh, that I cut out from a photo using like a photo editor. I just kind of like clipped her out and export her out as a PNG. And here she is. This is the assets that I have for this project. Because I found her and she seemed pretty cool, um, I'm thinking we are gonna do some sort of fashion driven you know, landing page or header section. Again, we're not doing the whole site, we're just doing this piece. We're focusing on this. Um, let's see, so I have my colors over here and I guess the first thing I could do is like just drop a color in and give it a little bit of like background color. Cause we don't want to go pure white. Let's use our color palette. Uh, the next thing we could do is maybe grab one of the colors and kind of demonstrate like here's, here's where you might start. You might do something like this, lay out that big horizontal billboard, bring your model in maybe, maybe mask them. And now you're going, right? You're putting some typography and you're doing your thing. <sighs> That's okay. That's not bad. It's just not exciting. It's been done before. You know, so we, we wanna kinda break those patterns as much as we can. So let's bring her back out there. What can we do that's a little bit different? Well, we have, our, we have our background color. Let's just lock that. Let's bring that purple color back in, actually. Um, and instead of going horizontal with it, why don't we go vertical with it, okay? Um, so we could go vertical with it, we could go completely in half. And you know, I think a good thing to do is turn on our layout, um, but we don't wanna do the middle because that's kind of boring. So how about we go more like two thirds? Um, that could be kind of cool. Let's just lock that background, um, the purple, and then let's bring our model in and we could like put her here, right? And I don't know how what we would do over here or maybe just drop her in here. But I think what would be more fun is to kind of move her over and break the plane in between the two sections. Now we have some dimensionality. Let's, let's let that be kind of the driving factor or force of this design, of this composition. It's a little bit more dimensionality. So we're gonna pop her right in there. Um, that looks pretty cool. Um, we're looking for, probably over here obviously is gonna go our text. So again, we don't have to abandon all of the standard kind of practices, but we wanna add some things in that just give it a little bit of spice, right? So we can drop some text in here. Um, let's make it like a nice big headline. It's Helvetica New. Let's just see what we can do with Helvetica New. We're not even gonna choose a font. We're just gonna see what we can do with this. Let's put it right on the grid line um, and just like that. Okay, so there's a big headline. Let's do some sub copy, why not? We'll just take our, um, our 60 pixel kind of size of our Helvetica new bold and we'll just divide it by three. 
this is not the end all be all of typographic scales. I'm just trying to do it really, really quick and dirty. Another good way to get contrast between text is to go, is to drop down two weights. So go from bold, not medium, but down to regular. So now we have a little bit of contrast in the text. Okay, I'm gonna use my line height and just kind of space out our text. That's looking pretty good. We've just given it a little bit of space from our headline. And let's come down here really quickly and just say shop the collection, okay? And we will take that and move it back to our bold and let's use our purple color as kind of a, a call to action. So it doesn't have to be a button. Maybe it would be a button. Maybe it doesn't have to be a button. We can just do a link. That could be kind of cool and fun. Okay, so let's do that. I like taking all three of them and grouping them together. And then look, it's not dead center, right? Because that's kind of boring. Let's raise it up also and use some of that two thirds action going on. So let's do that right there. This leaves room for more stuff down below or uh, a navigation up top, um, so we can do that. Um, but I feel like we need to come back here and work this dimensionality piece out a little bit. Let's lock our model. Let's lock our, our text, okay, over there. And um, when I see these squares, it just makes me wanna do a square. So I'm gonna grab kind of a fun contrasting color and I'm going to just pop that in. I'm gonna make it big. And why don't I, I'm just gonna copy and paste it and drop it down. And I'm gonna use my Boolean operations to kind of make a new combined shape. Um, okay, cool, that's kind of cool. Um, but let's give it dimensionality, right? Let's drop it behind my model and let's give it like a 15 pixel kind of tilt. And now there's something behind her. We should pop something out as well. So let's do maybe a circle, okay? Um, and let's fill it with the same kind of peach color. But this time let's put it on top of the model and let's make another one. We'll do a similar thing here. We'll subtract and make a shape. I, I have an idea. Um, let's take the model, um, the picture of the model here, and we will come to our circle in the combined shape and we're just gonna paste another version of the model. Now, you'd say like, why would you do that? It just looks like it's behind it now. Because what if we turn this into a mask and then we took our model and gave her like some sort of like, like blending mode. So now you can see through it. I think that brings a little bit more dimensionality. That's kind of fun. Um, this could probably shrink a little bit. Okay, cool. And then, um, yeah, you know what? I really like this circle, actually. I, I feel like we should just come up and do another circle. Let's get rid of the model, though. Um, and we'll take it out of this folder. And let's just shrink it down and make it like our logo. And then the last thing we probably need is, you know, is it a static? Uh, like image, it could be. I could imagine actually, if I zoom out, I could imagine each of these elements, like the model and the shapes, being different animated layers and having like a little bit of life of their own and that there would be multiple. So like we'd be seeing a piece of the collection here. And so we wanna have some sort of controls so we could, you know, like navigate in between the different dresses or the different pieces in the collection. Well, that's it. That's my attempt on breaking the mold on your standard kind of homepage header hero area of a website. I'm sure there's a lot more we could do with this. It's far from a perfect design, but I think it's good exploration and a good attempt into trying something a little bit more unique. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video comes out in this series. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and thinking outside of the box. I'll see you in the next one.